five years. Now the trend is do not apply the plaster Paris and make the patient almost immobile especially for using the arm, forearm and fingers to a certain extent. Number two is going to take at least three months or two and a half months for removal of the plaster following which the patient may develop stiffness of the elbow, stiffness of the wrist and fingers etc. So to avoid all those things we try to do a open reduction. Another big advantage of open reduction is to get a proper open reduction followed by appropriate good anatomical reduction and fixation with proper screws and plates we can make the patient go about within a few days itself. If you have got a real good rigid internal fixation then the advantage is the patient can start using the limb within 72 hours because in non weight bearing area and limb usually we can make the patient to start mobilizing the elbow, wrist and fingers also this is a special advantage and not only that at the time of fixation we can get a very good reduction it's almost like hairline reduction we call it. We can get the fragments into position properly previously displaced fragments like this we can get into position by bringing them here like this. Once we achieve this and then of course I will be talking about the, the types of reduction and how to fix it and all that. So this is an easier thing because the reduction is good and there is no chance of angulation etc and there will not be any deformity and the most important thing is we can make the patient go back to his job or work as soon as possible. Keeping this in mind various types of internal fixation devices are available of course before that a few decades ago external fixators were used for fixing a fragment here the purpose of external fixator is we will not have to actually open the fracture site and we can fix the things by using appropriate and external fixator devices are there several types are there so external fixator rods with appropriate clamps which we will be able to manipulate to get the fragments together and then compress them also this was, this was in vogue for some time but only problem is the external fixers will be a hindrance. The advantage of the, in compared to POP is that we can move the limbs quickly and mobilize the thing joints early. So these are the advantages of external fixators. Nowadays we do not use the external fixators in ordinary fracture both bone forearm except in the case of compound fractures. Whenever there is a compound fracture the bones are exposed they are exposed to the atmosphere and probability of infection is more especially the type of compound fracture is more than grade 2 or grade 3. Sometimes the skin will not be available for covering immediately after surgery. So for some of these things only we use the external fixtures. Mainly now it is used for compound fractures beyond grade 2 and grade 3. So the commonly used devices now are number 1 dynamic compression plate limited contact LC limited contact DC. This is DCP limited contact TCP and for the osteoporotic bones in elderly patients we are nowadays using what are known as locking compression plates. Each has got its own advantages indications and then of course the availability especially these days we have stopped using as much as possible the stainless steel things which were being used for about till about 1990s or late 80s. Now most of the things we are doing under with titanium. The advantage of titanium is it will not be a hindrance at the time of taking MRIs even in ordinary malls and all that nowadays security check is there. So every time we will have to tell the person that he has I am operated upon show this car or carry a certificate like this. So to avoid all these things also if you use the titanium plate patients can move about without any hindrance at the security check areas this is the second thing and third thing is the metal reaction is going to be less if you use titanium and these are the three things particularly useful because if metal the reaction is going to be quite a little bit about 1 to 2 percent of the people will have reaction to metal but whereas at titanium there is no reaction so these are the three major advantages that is why the material also even though it is little costly when old stainless steel type of 
plates, we are using titanium plates. In that, the three varieties I have already mentioned. One, a dynamic compression plate. Two, limited contact dynamic compression plate. Three, especially in elderly people or where the bones are osteoporotic due to any other reason, we can use this compression plates with locking. Why these three things are there? One thing is previously we used to have, once again for historical purposes, different names were used to be there. There is round holes like that. So, here once we put the screws, the fragments underneath will not move. So, that is why the first thing they have devised was make them little void similarly opposite side. The advantage is as you fixing the screw, the fragments which are little bit a millimeter, two millimeter gap, they come together because at sliding of the screw, these fragments which are away from each other, they will have what is known as compression. This compression is absolutely necessary for quick union and solid union of the fractures. That is why this dynamic compression plate is used. An advantage over this is the locking compression plate. Here the screw just slides down. Whereas, the other thing what is known as here, screw here will be there. Here there is a hole where we can apply ordinary type of screw. So, advantage of this is one this particular because there are screws inside guys is there. Once you tighten the screws, the screw gets locked here. So, here in this case, when you are looking, using locking compression plate, you have got to be very careful. Unless you lock them properly, it may be extruded or sometimes it may not allow the fracture to get united. So, these are all technical difficulties are there. Unless one is used to them, you should not use them unless you have got the proper devices and proper screwdrivers and all that. So, these are the three things that are normally used and the basic idea why we use these three different techniques. Once they come, the fracture both bones is there, there are two things. One is, first step is to get them together. That we call this open reduction, displaced like this. Previously, I said manipulation. That is, we do not cut. Here, we make an incision, bring them together. Once we bring them together by opening the fracture side, we call it as open reduction then fra fracture becomes like this. So, this is when we bring them together from this position, this place position, we call it as open reduction means we are opening the site. That is why we call it as open reduction. Once we bring them back into position, they do not remain there because you have cut open and seen the fracture. Something has to be there which fixes the bones together. That is known as internal fixation. Because we fix the thing with devices which are put inside, we call it internal fixation. So, both together nowadays shortest form is O R I F. What are the thing, precautions or what are the instructions that are necessary for quick recovery following open reduction and internal fixation? If needed, immobilize the limb for about couple of hours with just arm pouch. Second, inside the arm pouch itself, we can make the patient mobilize the elbow, then mobilize the fingers and wrist also. These three things are necessary and especially if you are dealing with a patient beyond the age of 35, 40, the shoulder exercises also are very, very important. You have got to ask the patient to lift the shoulder or simple pendulum exercise and all that. This is for two after two days. First 48 hours you have got to immobilize them if necessary with a pouch because immediately there is going to be a little bit of edema, then post operative pain. To combat all those things, you can give anti-inflammatory drugs and then if needed in cases where you have got to, where you suspect that likelihood of some infection, you have got to manage the patient for a few days with antibiotics. So, these things are absolutely necessary and then after 48 hours proper physiotherapy by as quickly as possible mobilizing the limb. But mind you, if the patient has got pain or any swelling, do not be in a hurry to mobilize. So, usually we mobilize them within 48 to 72 hours. 